Today, October 6, 2025, the National Weather Service made a historic announcement that would end one of the most remarkable statistical anomalies in severe weather history. The Enderlin, North Dakota tornado that devastated portions of southeastern North Dakota on the evening of June 20th, 2025, was officially upgraded to an EF5 rating, the first tornado to receive this classification in 12 years. This upgrade, based on months of detailed forensic analysis of unprecedented damage indicators, marks the end of one of the longest gaps between EF5 tornadoes since the National Weather Service began maintaining comprehensive records since 1950. The event not only represents a significant milestone in tornado documentation, but also provides valuable insights into the challenges meteorologists face when assessing extreme tornado damage in rural areas. The stage for this historic tornado was set by a complex atmospheric pattern that unfolded across the northern plains on June 20th, 2025. According to the Storm Prediction Center's convective outlook issued on June 19th, forecasters identified an enhanced risk of severe thunderstorms stretching from far eastern Montana across parts of the Dakotas and Minnesota. The meteorological setup was characterized by several key ingredients that would prove conductive to violent tornado development. The Storm Prediction Center's outlook specifically noted that, quote, the nose of the low-level lapse rate plume should result in at least a small area of uncapped and very unstable air mass, perhaps over northeast South Dakota and southeast North Dakota. Here, a conditional supercell and tornado risk will exist. Should storms form in this area, very large hail and tornadoes appear likely, unquote. This forecast would prove remarkably true. At 11.02 p.m. on June 20th, 2025, the Enderlin tornado touched down along 58th Street Southeast, just south of Enderlin, North Dakota. The tornado's initial touchdown was marked by snapped tree branches at EF0 intensity, but this relatively benign beginning would quickly give way to a catastrophic devastation. The tornado rapidly intensified and widened as it moved northeastward, entering what would become a 19-minute journey of destruction. One of the first indicators of the tornado's extraordinary intensity came when it encountered a freight train south of North Dakota Highway 46. The tornado derailed several train cars, with one empty tanker car being thrown several hundred feet, a damage indicator that would later prove crucial to the rating upgrade. Continuing its northward track, the tornado demonstrated its violent nature by blowing over a cell tower, devastating crop fields, and snapping large trees, with some being completely debarked, a classic indicator of extreme wind speeds. As the tornado crossed through rural farmland, it encountered a farmhouse that it completely swept away from its foundation, with nearby outbuildings destroyed. The most tragic damage occurred when the tornado crossed North Dakota Highway 46. Two houses in particular suffered catastrophic devastation. The first was completely leveled, resulting in two fatalities. The second house was also leveled, killing one person. These three deaths would make the Enderlin tornado the deadliest to strike North Dakota since 1978. Before weakening and dissipating, the tornado began to turn northwest, demonstrating its immense power by bending over tall steel electrical transmission towers, structures designed to withstand extreme wind loads. The tornado maintained its intensity for approximately 19 minutes, carving a path of destruction estimated at 12.1 miles across the North Dakota prairie. The tornado's highest official wind speeds peaked at 210 miles per hour, with unofficial wind speeds as high as 266 miles per hour. At its peak, the tornado reached a width of 1.05 miles, making it a very large and violent wedge tornado. The Enderlin, North Dakota tornado occurred within the context of a larger severe weather outbreak that affected a vast region. A long-lived destructive thunderstorm event known as a derecho had slammed an area more than 300 miles long with wind gusts ranging from 70 miles per hour to as high as 106 miles per hour. 
The derecho produced hurricane force winds across Montana, North Dakota, Minnesota, and South Dakota, with the highest confirmed wind gust reaching 120 miles per hour. The broader storm system spawned multiple tornadoes across the northern plains and southern Canada, with numerous tornadoes touching down in the Canadian province of Saskatchewan as well. The response to the Enderlin tornado began under extremely challenging conditions. According to Cass County Sheriff Jesse Janner, first responders encountered a scene of devastation while the storm system was still active and dangerous. The Cass County Sheriff's Office was dispatched to rural Enderlin at approximately 11.40 p.m. local time on June 20th for reports of tornado damage at a residence. When deputies arrived on the scene, the Enderlin Fire Department informed them that the storm chasers had located two deceased individuals as a result of the tornado. Shortly thereafter, the fire department was dispatched to another location where a third deceased person was discovered. Sheriff Janner later told reporters that responding to such a scene, encountering people that they were familiar with in such a difficult situation, was particularly challenging for the first responders. Deputies and emergency personnel found extensive damage to the area and immediately began conducting well-being checks on residents in cooperation with several partner agencies. Law enforcement, the Enderlin Fire Department, and other first responders continued searching the area and checking on residents throughout the night and into the following day. Thousands of homes lost power during the storm, complicating rescue and recovery efforts. On June 21st, North Dakota Governor Kelly Armstrong declared a statewide disaster and activated the state emergency operations plan after multiple tornadoes, strong winds, and hail caused widespread damage across the state. In his statement, Governor Armstrong expressed sympathy for the families and friends of the three North Dakotans who lost their lives and for the close-knit community of Enderlin, which suffered widespread damage. The state emergency operations plan directed all state agencies to utilize their response and recovery resources and coordinate with appropriate federal agencies to help local and tribal officials restore services and infrastructure. In the immediate aftermath of the tornado, meteorologists from the National Weather Service office in Grand Forks, North Dakota, headed into the field to begin assessing the damage. The preliminary damage survey, completed in the days following the event, assigned the Enderlin tornado a rating of EF3, indicated estimated wind speeds of 136 to 165 miles per hour. This initial rating was based on the observable structural damage to homes and other buildings, which is the standard method for rating tornadoes under the enhanced Fujita scale. However, the unique nature of the damage, particularly to rail cars, prompted a more extensive investigation. Melinda Behrens, meteorologist in charge at the National Weather Service in Grand Forks, explained that determining a tornado's strength usually takes days or weeks as meteorologists study damage to buildings and trees. The Enderlin case took much longer, nearly four months, because of the unusual and unprecedented damage to rail cars. The forensic analysis focused on two key damage indicators involving railroad equipment. First, the tornado had lofted empty tanker cars, each weighing 72,000 pounds. Most remarkably, one empty tanker car was thrown 475.5 feet from its original position. Second, the tornado had tipped over fully loaded grain hopper cars, each weighing 286,000 pounds. These damage indicators required careful engineering analysis to determine the wind speeds necessary to produce such efforts. On October 6, 2025, the National Weather Service officially upgraded the Enderlin tornado to EF5 status with estimated wind speeds exceeding 210 miles per hour. The upgrade was based primarily on the forensic analysis of the rail car damage, which provided conclusive evidence of winds in the EF5 range. The strong winds indicated by the damage analysis correlated well with the wind velocity data captured by the WSR-88D storm relative velocity readings from the KMVX radar site, providing additional confirmation of the rating. Melinda Behrens also noted that in the 12 years since the last EF5 tornado, there have been several strong tornadoes that come close to warranting the highest rating, but none had known damage indicators at the time to support the EF5 classification. 
She emphasized a fundamental challenge in tornado rating, saying, quote, It's hard sometimes to get tornadoes to hit something, end quote. This statement underscores a crucial limitation of the enhanced Fujita scale. It rates tornadoes based on the damage they produce, not on direct measurements of wind speed. A tornado with EF5 level winds that travels only through open fields or forests may never be rated as such because it lacks the engineered structures necessary to demonstrate those wind speeds. The upgrade of the Enderlin tornado to EF5 status ended the longest gap between EF5 rated tornadoes since modern record keeping began. The previous EF5 tornado occurred on May 20th, 2013 near Moore, Oklahoma, resulting in 24 fatalities and more than 200 injuries. That 12-year gap surpassed any previous period without an EF5 tornado since the National Weather Service began maintaining comprehensive tornado records in 1950. Since the enhanced Fujita scale was implemented in 2007, replacing the original Fujita scale, only nine tornadoes have been categorized as EF5. The Enderlin tornado now becomes that tenth on the exclusive list. The rarity of EF5 tornadoes speaks both to the extreme conditions required to produce such violent winds and to the challenges inherent in documenting them. Many factors must align. Not only must the atmospheric conditions support a violent tornado, but that tornado must also strike substantial structures or other damage indicators capable of revealing the true intensity of the winds. The Enderlin, North Dakota tornado also sets several notable records. At just 19 minutes in duration, it is the shortest lived EF5 tornado on record. Additionally, having formed at 46 degrees north latitude, it is the northernmost occurring EF5 tornado in the United States. These distinctions highlight the fact that violent tornadoes, while more common in the traditional tornado alley of the Central Plains, can occur in unexpected locations given the right atmospheric conditions. For comparison, the 1999 Bridge Creek Moore tornado in Oklahoma, which remains one of the most studied tornadoes in history, holds the record for the strongest winds ever recorded in a tornado at 321 miles per hour. Those winds were measured directly using mobile Doppler radar, while the Enderlin tornado's wind speeds were estimated through damage indicators, making its measurements fundamentally different in nature. While the Enderlin tornado represented the most intense event of the outbreak, it occurred within a much larger severe weather system that affected a vast region from June 19th through 22nd of 2025. The storm system produced a total of 41 confirmed tornadoes and claimed seven lives across the northern United States and southern Canada. The derecho that accompanied the tornado outbreak produced extensive wind damage across Montana, North Dakota, Minnesota, and South Dakota. The destructive wind event stretched more than 300 miles with sustained high winds and numerous damaging gusts. The derecho's wind reached hurricane force in many locations with the peak confirmed gust of 120 miles per hour representing Category 3 hurricane intensity. On June 21st, the same weather system produced another squall line that brought damaging winds, several downbursts, and flash flooding to southern Ontario, Canada. This line of storms resulted in one fatality caused by a downburst. The storm system then pushed into northern New York on early June 22nd, spawning a deadly EF1 tornado that killed three people in Clark Mills. This tornado, along with widespread wind damage and flash flooding, extended the outbreak's deadly impact into a fourth day. At least one other tornado was confirmed in North Dakota on the same day as the Enderlin event, indicating multiple supercell thunderstorms were active across the region. The Saskatchewan tornadoes, while not specifically detailed in available reports, added to the international scope of this historic outbreak. The Enderlin EF5 tornado of June 20th, 2025, and its subsequent rating upgrade on October 6, 2025, represent a significant event in the history of severe weather documentation. The tornado's intensity, combined with the tragic loss of three lives and the extensive damage to property and infrastructure, serves as a sobering reminder of nature's awesome destructive power. The four-month forensic investigation that ultimately led to the EF5 rating demonstrates the complexity and scientific rigor required to accurately assess extreme tornado damage. 
As climate patterns evolve and meteorological understanding advances, events like the Enderlin tornado provide crucial data points for researchers studying severe weather. The detailed documentation of this storm, from the meteorological conditions that spawned it to the forensic analysis that determined its vital rating, will contribute to improved forecasting techniques and better understanding of violent tornado dynamics. While the 12-year gap between EF5 tornadoes may have been fortuitous, the Enderlin event reminds us that the potential for such extreme weather events remains ever-present, demanding respect for the power of severe storms. Thanks to everyone who watched today's video. I worked really hard on this since first learning of the tornado's upgraded EF5 rating this morning. It's definitely a historic day in severe weather reporting. Please let me know in the comments if you agree with the new EF5 rating or if you have any suggestions for new videos. Thanks again for tuning in. This has been Deadliest Disasters.